Welcome to the Rusted Garden Homestead. This video is going to serve two purposes. I'm going to show you how to dig a basic earth bed, maybe for your first garden or just a small garden for your family. This is about three or four feet wide. That's what I recommend. 25 to 30 feet long. You can make it as long as you want. If you're just getting into gardening, maybe you want this to be you know, about four feet wide, eight feet long, but I'll leave that up to you. I'm going to show you how to set it up with fertilizer, peat moss, bring in some soil, and just get it ready for planting. I also just shot a video on growing a tomato hedge. There's about 15 tomato plants in here. This bed's three feet wide, 25, 30 feet long. I think there's maybe 15 plants in there. But I'm also going to set this up for my own purposes with cherry tomatoes. So I'm going to show people how to do that too. But if this is your first time getting into gardening, this is a great way to just dig a basic earth bed and get started. And I'll talk about the different plantings you can Let put in there. Let me get started. Um, with just a quick review, first thing, pretty simple. Three, four feet wide, dig out the grass, just dig deep enough to remove the roots. Go uh, throw that into your compost area, go fill some uh, depressions in your soil. But you want to remove the grass so you have a nice clean slate, and then we're going to bring all the amendments to this space. After you dig it out, you want to put down any basic organic fertilizer. I recommend staying around a 555 NP and K. That's nitrogen, phosphorus, and potassium. And you'll see numbers on the bags that you buy. So look for a 555. It's fine if you go up and down a couple of numbers. You might find a 364, you know, a 742. Don't worry about it. You're just getting any basic organic fertilizer trying to stay around the 555 NP and K and you're just going to sprinkle it just like that. You could follow the instructions on there but I really find just sprinkling across the bottom looking something like that. You could put a little more in if you want and you're going to do that all the way down and that's just providing some basic fertilizer in the depth of your soil so when your plant roots get down there they're going to have something that they can use. There's already plenty of nutrients in here. You don't want to overdo it, but we're going to just drop in some NP and K. Keep it nice and simple. So this bed's probably 25 to 30 feet long. It's not quite four feet, maybe three, three and a half feet wide. You're going to use a three cubic foot bale of peat moss for about something half this size. So I'm going to need two in this space. And you're just going to uh, open it up. You're looking for the three cubic feet right there. And when you go and buy this, it's finely milled. You're using this really for water retention. There's no nutritional value in here. It's just, you know, again, finely milled. It's going to hold water. It'll loosen up your soil. If you have really loose soil, maybe you don't use as much. If you have heavy soil, more clay soil, maybe you need to use more. If you don't want to use peat moss, you could use cocoa core. If you have a lot of compost in your yard that you've made, you can use that too. But we're going to take one three cubic foot bale, spread it out across here. I'll show you what that looks like when I'm done. And then we're going to turn the earth over, mix the peat moss in, mix the organic fertilizer in. This is what the two bales look like in this space. I wanted to show that to you real quickly before I spread it out. So you can sort of eyeball what you might need. I don't know, maybe we're doing one, two, three inches across the space. It's all gonna really vary depending on what you wanna do. Peat moss, again, no nutritional value, but it's really good for loosening up the soil, will help your roots develop, will hold water, will just make the garden, the garden space a happier place for your plants. You could use cocoa core if you have compost. Compost is great organic matter because it does the same thing as the peat moss, but it has nutrition in it. It has N, P, and K and all kinds of micro nutrients in there, but I find we just don't have enough locally or we don't have enough in your yard. So go ahead and use peat moss to set it up. I'll do other videos on making compost so you can use that in the future. I'm going to spread this out. We're going to turn it over. I'll show you that process. So this is what it looks like. Turn it over. Turn it over to about the depth of the shovel. You could break it up if you want to. You don't have to. I'm going to leave mine just like that, but the right side is done. And this is what it looks like, just spreading it out. A couple of inches. It does not have to be perfect. Follow this as a principle, not as an exact science. You don't have to follow this exactly to be successful. This again, just about maybe three and a half feet wide, almost four feet. This is probably 10 or 12 feet. This is perfect if you're just starting your first vegetable garden. You could get a tomato plant or two in there, two or three peppers, maybe an eggplant, 
uh, a cucumber if you trellis it upwards. But this is perfect. If you're just starting with your first garden, you don't want to build something so big that it's hard to take care of. You don't have to overdo it. You know, a couple of tomatoes, a couple of peppers, a cucumber, and you're good to go. Let me finish this out, then I'm going to bring in the uh, garden soil that we're going to mix into here. We're going to mound this up. You don't want it sitting low because too little water is a problem, but too much water can be a problem too. So you want to pick a space that drains well, and we're going to build this up a little bit so that it also drains and the plants don't sit in water. So for this space, I need about four wheelbarrow fulls. That's what I'm dropping in there, just to give you an idea. That's um, a mix, topsoil leaf grow that I had dumped on my driveway from a landscaping company and you may be able to find that in your areas. It's not the greatest but it's good enough for this purpose. If you have to buy your stuff at Home Depot or Lowe's, I recommend getting garden soil. It'll say on there garden soil. When you go to those stores you see topsoil, premium topsoil, garden soil, container soil, potting mix, sometimes potting soil, raised bed soil, raised bed mix. They're all just progressions of adding more peat moss in there. So the more peat moss you add, the more you pay. Topsoil is the cheapest. Garden soil is right in the middle. That's what you want to buy, and you can often find it on sale. Any of it is fine. It's got fertilizers in there. It's perfectly fine. Just to give you an idea, if we're going with this space here, you're going to need one bag, two bags, three bags, four bags for something half this size, and it really would probably be probably be depending on the size of the bags you get four to six bags I'm gonna dump this rake it out we're gonna put more fertilizer down I'll show you how to do that and then we're gonna mound it up and again don't spend a lot of money on your garden soil just get whatever's on sale so here's the added soil raked across the space and you can see that it is above the grass so it is raised up a little bit. If you're gardening in a place where water is scarce, you don't get a lot of rain, you're probably fine just to go with this and you can start your garden. Um, you still want to dig a trench in from here. I'm going to show you how to do that. But you don't have to mound it up as high as I'm going to do it. Um, real quick too, you want your garden to be about four feet wide because you can reach in from the left side, from the right side without walking into it and tend your garden. So once we turn this over, and we're putting a lot of energy in now, you really aren't gonna walk on this, you're not gonna compact it down, and you're not gonna have to do that again. We're gonna turn this over one more time. You don't have to if you don't want to, but I'm gonna do that. So now that the topsoil is down across the top, another handful of fertilizer just sprinkled liberally across, just like that, all the way down, and I'm gonna turn this under. If you didn't wanna turn this over again, you would just rake it in to the top couple of inches and you're, you're good to go. This fertilizer is a 346, three nitrogen, four potassium, six phosphorus, or I think I said that backwards, um, 346 NPK phosphorus potassium. Anyway, <laughs> sorry about that, I am tired. This is kind of kicking my butt. It's like 90 degrees here. All right, back to focusing. So this was a three, four, six. The other fertilizer I think was a six, four, three. Just try and stay around a five, five, five. Don't overthink it. Most organic fertilizers have the same ingredients in there. So we're gonna put the fertilizer down there and then we're gonna mound up the side. I'll show you the edges and then we'll get to planting. So here it is all mounded up. Basically took the shovel, went all the way around and just dug in and threw the dirt into the center all the way around. It builds a trench. When it rains, water will settle down here. It'll go away from the root system. Lots of roots will be right in here. When you water, you can just fill this area up. It will soak into there. So there's a lot of benefits to doing the trench. Also makes a nice edge for the lawn. Again, you don't have to come up this high if you have if you're growing in a zone where watering is or where rain is more scarce and you're going to have to come out and water by hand. But this would be the basic setup. You could really stop here and plant. We're not going to add anything into the planting hole. We put in plenty of organic fertilizer. This is really ready to go. You know, the big clumps have to be broken up, but you could just, you know, shape this how you want and get to planting. I'm going to do the tomatoes at the end of this video, but let me walk you over. If you're not going to do the tomato hedge, you're going to want to just plant your garden. Of course, you could put anything in there that you'd like. 
But right over here, I have some raised beds. They're about the same width, about three feet wide. And you can plant something like this. You could drop a tomato plant in like that, pepper plant over in that corner that is a zucchini. Do something like this, two Brussels sprouts on the right, peppers are on in the front. The sun is where I am, so the peppers are in the front getting the sun. Tomatoes are on the side so that they don't shade off the other plants. But this is just a basic setup. But go ahead and subscribe to my channel and you can see the ways that I set up the different raised beds and you can plant your new bed just like that. All right, to the cherry tomatoes. All right, so a cherry tomato hedge is gonna be huge, so it's not for the faint of heart. If you wanna try it out, I encourage you to. It's gonna be a lot of fun. These are gonna to have to get pruned a little bit, but mostly just whacking them back because they're gonna get so big. If you wanna do something like this, but want something a little more manageable, take out every second tomato, put a space in there about 12, uh, about 24 inches or, or really larger. So let's go down the line. We have red currant, world's smallest. These are spaced 12 to 14 inches. Yellow pear, pink cherry, white cherry, red pear, early cascade, oh, that one flipped over. That's a mystery. Rising Traub, a sweetie tomato, chocolate cherry, sugar lump, Tommy Toe, and a Matt's Wild, which gets huge. So I gave that a little bit more space. But again, if you want more space, something like that. If you want to go with the full hedge, we're going 12 to 14 inches. I'm going to be treating these with hydrogen peroxide. I have a video on that, but I'll be doing more videos. It really works to manage um, fungal diseases. I get early blight all the time in my garden every year. It doesn't matter. It's the zone I'm in. Not doing anything wrong. You're not doing anything wrong when diseases come to your garden. But I'm going to kind of preemptively deal with it by starting to spray before I see it on the leaves. All right, so let's get to planting. Future videos, we'll get to trellising and care and all that kind of stuff. But I'm just going to show you the basic planting hole. So planting's pretty simple. Remove some of the bottom leaves. We're going to plant to here. This soil's really loose. You really don't even need a shovel. Just break up the clumps. Mix it through. Plenty of fertilizer in here. You just don't want any big clumps around. Pop it out. Starting to get a little bit coiled. Scrape them up a little. Going to go to here. Break up any clumps, and that's the basic planting. As I work my way down the garden, I will smooth up the mound, but let me get to fixing all of these. That simple. Press it in, and of course, we'll water it afterwards. So everything is planted. The right side has been kind of smoothed and shaped. The left side hasn't yet. I'll do that in a bit. These are all going to get watered in. Going to put my uh, label stakes in there so I know what I'm growing. The tomato plants that are here, if you uh, watch, um, my videos and you're subscribed to my channel, you saw that these were struggling about two or three weeks ago and I went through a whole process on how you rescue them and they're doing extremely well. They look great. Timing worked out. They got healthy. They got into the ground. I will link that video if you want to see how you can save beat up tomato plants. So my second hedge is in. Please subscribe to my channel. I will show you how I take care of this entire garden, my two acres, how I build on it, but I will also show you how we take care of the tomatoes in the cherry tomato hedge. Please check out my seed shop at therustedgarden.com and thanks so much for watching.